April 13th, 2011 is a day that I will always, that will always be hard for my family. One that I don't speak of often because I can't handle the tears that it brings to my eyes, the knot to the back of my throat, or the grief that it brings upon my heart. This is the anniversary of a day that has left me with painful thoughts of regrets and what ifs. This is the day that changed my life. This is my open letter to heroin. Every morning my alarm goes off and I roll onto my side and I open my eyes to the last physical piece of the man that you took from me. I hit my knees and I thank God just for today. I admit that I am powerless, but I will not succumb to the powerless, powerless of you. You took something from me that I cannot forgive. I can never get it back and I will tell anyone who will listen. Growing up without a father present was hard and my cousin Dom was the closest thing that I had. He was warm and kind, but protective at times. He loved to dance and make others laugh. He was the life of the party. His large bouncer construction type build was in complete contrast to his love of musicals, the movie Elf, and his sweet, quiet giggle. He was my biggest fan. I had dreams to be on Broadway, and he was going to make sure that I got there and be my bodyguard. He sat through all of my shows, made t-shirts that said Rinker Fan Club and Millie's Bodyguard, even managed to sit through my teenage production of Cats Sober. And as any parent can attest, that in itself is worthy of a medal. He loved going to the beach on Wednesday nights to listen to the music before the fireworks. Grease was our favorite part. Singing Summer Loving and You're the One That I Want over fried dough was something I looked forward to every year. Like everyone, Dom was not without vices. His obsession with Abercrombie sweatshirts, cheese dogs, and Slurpees aside, he liked to indulge in Budweiser, Marlboro Reds, and celebrate with a chilled shot of Crown Royal or two. They say someone with an addictive personality can overdose on anything. Work, exercise, coffee. It's only when the substance is labeled bad that we worry. Like many addicts, Dom's problem started with a substance provided by his doctor. He worked as a bouncer at a biker bar in Laconia, and after three visits to the emergency room within four days, they sent him home to Manchester. Selfishly, I was thrilled to have him back for the summer. He had some pretty serious injuries, and while I will not go into the disgusting details involved in caring for them, the regimen did include prescription drugs. After a time, his doctors suspected abuse of the medication and neglected to provide him with more. Then he got kidney stones and the prescription started rolling in again. Fast forwarding through five painful years of subst substance abuse, lying, and stealing from my family, the man he once was had disappeared. He called me late, very upset, on the night of April 11. He had been turned away from every rehab in the area at that time because they were too full. He said that he was sorry that he hadn't been around and no matter what happened, he loved me very much. I found out later the consequences of his criminal actions were starting to catch up with him. The following week, he was going to the Farnham Center to start a detox program. I let out a sigh of relief. He was saved. Two days later, Wednesday, April 13th, 2011, the world turned as usual. The day brought heavy, warm showers from the morning through the night. I rehearsed all day inside of this very theater. If I close my eyes, I can feel every detail about this day down to the smell of the set. Rehearsal ended. Myself and fellow castmates had multiple missed calls from my mom and my sister. I knew something was wrong. I stepped outside and called my mom. And I was really nervous. Dominic passed away today. My mouth opened as all air exited my body. Rain, snot, tears, it all painted my face. My eyes were open, but I couldn't really see anything. I collapsed in between the bodies of those surrounding me. This is where I became hopeless. I became powerless at the thought of you, heroine. Grief entered my body and I couldn't shake it, and I still have not found a way. I don't remember how I got home. I know my mom came to visit and I think I was like, oh, here I made some costumes. I remember that I just wanted to get numb. 
I drank a lot after that. And I spent most nights kneeling on my friend's floor watching specifically Bring Him Home from Les Mis on repeat. That song struck a chord with me that night, and I can't listen to it anymore. There was one summer that I was singing A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes from Cinderella, and Dom jokingly asked me to sing it at his funeral. I laughed and I said yes because it was so far in the future. But when the time came, I couldn't bring myself to do it. And that's one of my only regrets. Dom was so fixated on heroin that he stopped showing up for me. It was his dream to see me in Hairspray, and I could feel his presence with me in this theater for every single show. He even managed to show up on time. There are those in my life that don't understand the hold that addiction has. They say that addiction is a choice. Yes, everyone does have control over their own actions, and no, most people don't wake up and say, like, oh yeah, I altered heroin today. In Dom's case, it started as a prescription pain medication from his doctor, and when something like that enters the body of someone with an addictive personality, it is no longer a means of choice, but a means of availability. Heroin is more readily available than prescription pain medication, and it provides the user with the same high. How sad is that? I'm not here to defend the action, but rather to open the eyes of those that don't understand that addiction doesn't care if you're rich or poor, healthy or unhealthy, young or old, educated or uneducated. Addiction will prey on whoever it can, and it wants you dead. It doesn't matter if we understand why or how, but it is happening. It is here and the time is now. We can no longer ignore the overwhelming number of overdoses. Recovery is possible. I surround myself with people that have recovered from addiction. They are a constant reminder of who Dom could have been, and it has created a fire within me to commit everything I do to his memory. While I could not achieve his sobriety for him, I can honor the sobriety that he could have had, and I will not go down without a fight. I had a minor setback in my personal life at the beginning of the year, and while I could have thrown myself a large pity party with a haul that was already paid for, I decided to take action. In less than a month, my family put together a fundraiser called Dominating Addiction. We raised over $6,000. How we chose to donate to Amber's place in Manchester. Amber's place is a recovery respite center, and they turn no one away. If Dom had a place like this five years ago, he would still be alive today to tell you this story. So heroin, this is goodbye. I cannot stay angry and I must choose not to be sad. All I can do is pray that this letter makes it into the hands of those who need it, to honor Dom's death so that it is no longer in vain. Thank you.